I was watching uh I was watching Mall Rats over Easter. It's one of the great Easter movies of all time. Um Mr. Svenning. Uh, just an incredible film. Um, that entire Mall Rats, Clerks, Clerks 2 is very funny. Um, but that whole um that whole world that he created was just incredible, where it all all overlaps Rick Darris. Um, but there's this story about the Garden State Plaza. This is uh, very near and dear to my heart. The Garden State Plaza will uh, will require patrons under 18 to be accompanied by a chaperone who's 21 or older on weekend nights in response to a spat of a spate or a spat of TikTok fueled mayhem. The policy will begin on April 28th and be in effect after 5 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays, according to mall officials who said the aim was to stomp out unruly behavior. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, the Garden State Plaza in Paramus, New Jersey, was my um, my teenage stomping grounds. Well, I guess, like, not my later teenage years, mostly my earlier teenage years, like uh, eighth, ninth grade kind of petered out around uh, 10th grade. Um, and then, and then it, then it just becomes a place to go shop. And, you know, I you know, worked at the mall for a little while, but there was, um, there was a time when I was like 14 or so when nothing brought me more joy on like a hot summer day to just go enjoy the air conditioning at the mall and fuck with every employee possible. Um, my friends, my friends and I were big time mall rats because we'd have, uh, we'd have practice. We'd have football practice or like travel baseball in the afternoon in the summer. So we were going to, we were going to be out sweating our asses off at the end of the day. So it was like the beginning of the day. It was just like, you wanted to find as much air conditioning as possible and fucking, and you know, cut loose and have fun because you're beginning, you're going to be getting yelled at by a bunch of middle-aged men at four o'clock. Um, so we would go to the, uh, we'd go to the mall and we would just fuck with people. Um, and it sounds like that's what's going on here. Um, we've seen an increase in large crowds of teens, essentially juveniles. The teens aren't just enjoying the property in shopping, dining, and entertainment. Wesley Rabiz, uh, senior general manager at the Plaza, told NorthJersey.com they're being unruly, violating the code of conduct, which can include running through the property, no running through the property in large groups, fighting and putting it on TikTok, basically disrupting business and making it uncomfortable for our everyday customers. Um, I mean, this was something that we were doing long before the days of, of TikTok and social media. Like we had a handful of very regular targets at the Garden State Plaza. We usually go to the uh, the Sharper Image and Mrs. Fields Cookies were two of our more regular victims. We'd go. There was this very grizzled old lady who worked at Mrs. Fields and we would just this it wasn't even that outrageous, but we would do it persistently and annoyingly and like in waves so we'd send a different guy up like every fucking every three minutes uh and we would ask if we could speak with mrs fields and we'd come up with really stupid reasons like we got food poisoning and we were puking all over and we wanted our money back or like there weren't enough chocolate chips and the chocolate chip could just the dumbest fucking reasons you could think to interrupt and ask for assistance and we would just send people up over and over and over again. We'd sit across. There was a Cinnabon across the hall. I would go over there. We need Cinnabon. And it would just be like, all right, dude, it's your turn. Like, go do it. Like, every few minutes. And then um, we'd, uh, after Cinnabon, we'd go upstairs. There was a sharper image. And we'd take the phone. They had a portable phone. Like It was like the employee phone. Um, and we would take it. And we would... Uh, <laughs> We'd call 411 and have them put us in touch with the Mrs. Fields cookie. And then we'd start asking the same questions over and over on, on the phone. And then we'd put the phone back down and they would call back and we'd wait for the store manager to pick up. And hilarity would ensue as the store manager at Sharper Image got yelled at by the, uh, the grizzled old lady 
at Mrs. Fields Cookies. <laughs> ah, what a time. It was a better America back then, pre-9-11 America, when a kid could be a kid. Um, and it really did, it laid the foundation um, for the behavior that would take place when we got our driver's licenses. Um, and we would like drive around throwing slurpees at people or like, we started drinking, um, we'd start raiding our parents' liquor cabinets, and then we would just take, you take a phone, a bottle of vodka, and some juice, and a few of your friends, and you got yourself a fucking night. You, you know, you bust out the, uh, the school phone book, you start making some calls, you harass the staff at Mrs. Fields with, uh, with fake food poisoning, um, and you're going to have, those are always... Those are always the deepest belly laughs of your life. Like you'll never replicate that shit because it's so much fun as a child to just wag your finger in the face of authority. There was um there was this one restaurant in Saddlebrook, K Pasta. I guess it was a pasta place. Um and uh we would call them and we told them that their pasta made us fat and that we had to watch Richard Simmons videos to lose weight and that the Richard Simmons videos made us gay and we would threaten to sue the restaurant because their pasta led to us becoming homosexuals. Um, and the fucking manager would go ballistic and it was just, just delightful. Um, one of my more sociopathic friends used to take the school phone book that they used to send out, which I don't even know if they fucking do that anymore. Um, but they used to just send you a book with everybody's phone number in it. So you, if you wanted to harass some dork, he just had his phone number available. It was fucking awesome. Um, ripe for abuse. And my friend would call when he knew if so, like if someone's family was on vacation or something like that, he'd call and leave a, a voicemail pretending to be someone having an affair with the father. <laughs> so when they when they came back, they, you know, the first thing you do when you you came home from vacation in the late 90s, early 2000s, you play the uh play the voicemail and everyone can hear it going off in the whole house. Everyone wants to hear if there's a message for them. It's just fucking sometimes it's really centrally located. Like maybe the guy gets lucky and it's down by, you know, in his office or something like that. But more likely than not, it's in like the fucking kitchen or the, the family room and he's playing it. And uh, some guys talking about how, you know, what you guys are doing is wrong. You need to, you need to come clean to your families, you know, meet me and we'll talk. Oh, fucking incredible. Um, and it turned out that apparently there were, there actually were fathers in our town who were having gay affairs. Um, not mine, not mine, not mine. I don't want to, I don't want to start an ugly rumor in the news industry. Um, anyway, uh, police and security guards will be stationed at the entrance of the mall to check IDs and anyone who refuses will be reportedly asked to leave. Mall officials said in the event, something does try to begin to escalate a little bit. We have a police officer right there on top of it to deescalate Dan Kennedy, senior vice president of security operation. At Garden State Plaza. Um, ba, ba, ba. Yeah. It is. I understand why there are adults who want to stop this stuff. It's always a weird situation when a, uh, teenagers are out gallivanting. I don't like I don't really care. Like if I see teenagers gallivanting, I'm not bothered about it uh, because I I did a lot of gallivanting as a teenager. But you always worry like. You know, if these gallivanting teens do something terrible and then they're like, you know, they're looking at video footage afterwards and it's like, oh, why didn't that that adult there didn't try to do anything about it. So now there's cameras everywhere. So everyone's kind of in a fucking rock in a hard place. Right. You don't want to I don't want to be the guy who uh, who goes viral for not stopping a bunch of teens from wilding. They're having a great time and fucking we'll check it out maybe next week. Chicago, they are having some fun. They love doing a little wilding out in Chicago. Um, do the teenagers. Philadelphia, too. Um, reactions to the new policy have been mixed. As a teacher, I feel like students need to, I mean, students, kids, everybody needs to be supervised. Shopper Jasmine Mark. Oh, I, I, 
don't you hate when you hear the phrase as a teacher? Um, I think that when they're here by themselves, they usually get in trouble. So I think that they should come with a parent. Others scoffed at the new rule. Kids should deserve that freedom. You know what I mean? Shopper Allie Brightwell said, I don't think they need a chaperone. Um, yeah, I mean, it does suck if you're one of the kids and and these dicks are just denying you hilarious lifelong memories. Like when I see my friends from high school, this is what we go back to. Like we don't, we really, for the most part, don't re, like relive old sports glory days. We talk about like vandalism and, and starting shit and all the really antisocial behavior we engaged in. <clears throat> like, you know, harassing the Mrs. Fields lady. Which must have, that must have been terrible to be in her shoes. Like, could you imagine being in, you know, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, and you, you know, you're working at a mall in an affluent suburb on a Friday night, and some just snot nosed little shit spends hours harassing you on the other side of the counter, and then, and then starts prank calling you uh, with obviously false food complaints. Do you know how fucking demeaning that must feel? What what are the odds that woman could even afford her own housing? She was pr- probably probably living in like a halfway house or with family or something like that and and these little these little shits just came in and fucked with her for hours. Or if you're if you're managing like K Pasta restaurant, I can't imagine K Pasta was a very good restaurant. Like it sounds like it sounds like kind of like a wing stop, but for pasta, right? It that's not K Pasta isn't the name of a respectable Italian restaurant. And really, really all you want to do if you're managing the K Pasta restaurant in Saddlebrook, all you want to do is maybe, maybe get a little drunk on the job zip through to the end of the shift so you can take the community college kids who are on your staff, you take them home, you do a little coke, you trade HPV strains with them, and you fuck them for a few weeks until, you know, they quit and then you hire a new batch and you pull the same shenanigans all over again. You know, you don't want to deal with, you don't want to deal with 14-year-old Mike Montone and his buddies spinning mistruths about your business while their voices crack on the other side of a fucking phone. It's no way to live. Garden State Plaza, the second largest mall in New Jersey, is not the first shopping center to place restrictions on unaccompanied minors. A complex in Columbia, Maryland, instituted a similar policy last month citing disruption from teens, the Baltimore Sun reported. Interesting. It's all a mess. Let's check the old comment section. Yes, of course we had Central Hair Conqueror. What kind of what kind of animals don't have central air? Anyway, let me uh let me get these guys out of here. We have our last story of the evening. Bring it up.